What's up, Taiwan? I'm Erica Liu with 10 minutes of news from here in Taiwan and around the world. China has lifted its ban on Gaoliang liquor, one of the most popular alcoholic drinks in Taiwan. Beijing imposed the ban last December after saying Taiwan vendors did not fill out import paperwork properly. This follows multiple food bans by China in recent years. Bing Wang reports. This is Gaoliang liquor from Jinmen Island. It's one of Taiwan's most famous drinks and at 58% alcohol, it certainly packs a punch. China banned the alcoholic drink back in December last year, saying Taiwan did not provide the correct documentation. Another 123 Taiwanese beverages were also banned around the same time. Since then, Taiwanese legislators have been working with Chinese officials to get the ban lifted. <laughs> 以台灣的大力協助下,已經順利解決,從今天2023年2月29日開始可以完全的進入大陸,已經解禁了。In recent years, Taiwan has routinely faced bans from China, which is its largest trade partner. In June 2022, China banned the import of grouper fish. China has also banned pineapples and wax apples from Taiwan, hurting the local economy. These are widely seen as intimidation tactics. China claims Taiwan as part of its own territory and has not ruled out annexing the country by force. While the ban on these beverages have been lifted, the prohibition on other products remains. And the Taiwan Mainland Affairs Council says there could be more embargoes ahead. We Besides the economic pressure, Taiwan has been facing regular incursions from Chinese military planes. A reminder that despite the lifting of the ban on Gaoliang, there's more at stake here than trade. Kama Xu and Bing Wang for Taiwan Plus. With Taiwan projected to become a super-aged society in little over two years, the country is exploring a range of new housing options for an aging population. Ryan Hillkilpatrick has more. These pristine modern flats look much like any other new high-end building in Taiwan cities. But looking at the finer details, such as wheelchair-accessible thresholds, support rails and panic buttons, reveals something special. The buildings are part of a retirement community in northern Taoyuan City. They're a new form of housing that's becoming increasingly necessary for a society that's rapidly aging. Taiwan is projected to become a super-aged society by 2025. By then, it's estimated that one in every five people in the country will be over 65 years old. Meeting the needs of this ballooning demographic requires a varied approach. In some cases, it can mean a greater demand for nursing homes with 24-hour care. But for others, it could be independent living communities like this one. The aging population is widely seen as an economic time bomb, but for some looking to tap the silver dollar, it's also an opportunity. While independent living facilities offer a security net, they also give residents greater freedom. This means they can still go out shopping, take part in computer or music classes, and enjoy other social activities. Facilities like these come at a cost, though. To help retirees with less money, the government is offering subsidies to help retrofit older dwellings. There are also plans for intergenerational social housing, which are designed so that young and old can both support and learn from each other. Ryan Hill Kilpatrick for Taiwan Plus. Taiwan sits on the boundary between two tectonic plates. That means in many places, untapped geothermal energy lies just below the Earth's surface. Right now, the country has just one power plant turning that energy into electricity. But on a dormant volcano near Taipei, work is underway to build more. Stash Butler reports. 
A half-built geothermal plant fires jets of steam heated by rocks deep below the earth. This site, on a dormant volcano just 20 kilometers north of Taipei, could soon produce energy for more than a thousand homes. Researchers say the Datun Volcano Group here holds as much as 70 percent of Taiwan's most accessible geothermal energy. And as the country shuts down its nuclear plants, that untapped renewable power could be vital to make up for the lost capacity. But the harsh environment has made generating power here difficult. The naturally acidic water eats away at machinery. That's why it's essential for plants to use superheated dry steam with little moisture, as a local energy executive explains. The plant here at Sihuan Ziping will be formally handed over to private operators in June. They expect it to be online by 2025. Developers see the plant as a test case for more future power plants in the area. If all goes to plan, this form of renewable energy could become invaluable in Taiwan's fight to cut back on fossil fuels. Leon Lien as Dash Butler for Taiwan Plus. A bird rarely seen in Taiwan has been spotted at a wetland in the south of the country. Local media reported the sighting of a few great crested grebe last week in Jai County. The birds are normally found in Europe and mainland Asia but they occasionally come to Taiwan in December and January before leaving again in the spring. How do former convicts in Taiwan make a new start after their release? For one man, it involves a newfound passion for traditional opera. Jeremy Olivier reports. Taiwan Gui is a man of many faces. A former convict, he has forged a new path in life by learning Sichuanese Changing Faces opera. This challenging performance art involves quick hand movements, ornate costumes, and multiple colorful masks. Tai began learning it while he was behind bars. Tai was arrested for his involvement in a high-profile firearms case. He then spent 10 years in and out of prison. After his final release, he wanted a fresh start. But the stigma of being a former convict in Taiwan made it difficult to put his past behind him. Taiwan has a relatively low rate of recidivism. Between January and November last year, around 16% of prisoners released on parole reoffended. The most common offenses were related to drugs, theft, and fraud. But Tai doesn't want to be a statistic. He wants to use his new skills to give back to society. As well as performing at local temples, Tai has set up his own support group for ex-convicts. Together, they pool their resources to help disadvantaged people in Taiwan. It's a powerful reminder that just like the masks in Sichuan Opera, even people with checkered pasts can change for the better and show people a new face. Klein Wang and Jeremy Olivier for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally today, we leave you with images of a lion dance troupe from a school in Kaohsiung, bringing New Year blessings to the community. I'm Erica Liu. Take care and see you next time.